Teslas are synonymous with not only electric vehicles, but also with being one of the leading car manufacturers of autonomous vehicle technology. Over the past seven to eight years, Tesla has made a name for themselves with their autopilot and full self-driving features. Although these options aren't perfect, they are definitely a huge step in the right direction toward fully autonomous vehicles in the future. Hey everyone, Mike Emil here. As the owner of a 2021 Tesla Model 3, I can easily say without a doubt that having this technology has made driving that much more fun and enjoyable, especially on the highway. Now, in just a few seconds, we'll get out on the road, but beforehand, I just wanted to distinguish the difference between Tesla's basic autopilot and full self-driving package. Basic autopilot is essentially adaptive cruise control with a lane keep system. So what that will do is keep you in your lane while also maintaining a cruise speed that you set as well as a proper distance that you control from the car in front of you. Now, on the other side, the full self-driving upgrade has all of the basic autopilot features as well as navigate on autopilot. So what that does is when you get on the highway and activate autopilot, it'll adjust, get you on the highway and do all the driving, so to say, to get you off to the exit ramp. It also has auto lane change. So if you put the turn signal on, it'll change the lane when it's safe. It also has auto park. So when you come up to a parking spot, it'll either pull in or parallel park for you. It has smart summon. So when you're in a parking lot and you want the car to come to you, the car will come through the parking lot. And it also has traffic light and stop sign control. So that will essentially read stop signs and traffic lights. And if it senses a red light or that stop sign, it's going to bring the car to a stop. So those are the main differences between autopilot and the full self-driving package, which you can upgrade to for either $10,000 or if you wanted to try it, you can do the subscription first, which is $200 a month but I just figured it would be best to clarify that for everyone. I also only have the basic autopilot. I did not upgrade to the full self-driving, but I'm very happy with autopilot. And I think this is the best time for us to get out on the road and let me show you how this feature works. So I am going to get onto the highway here in just a second and then we will activate the car's autopilot. There actually is a decent bit of traffic on this portion of the highway that I'm going to be on. So you will get a good idea of how the car reacts. Alright, so now that we're on the highway, one of the things that the autopilot needs is clean lines to know exactly what the designated lane is. Then once you're there, get into about the middle of the lane and you're going to use the right driving stalk and you're going to push down twice. Okay, now as you can see here on the screen, the blue circle around the 67 shows the speed that I'm going to have the car cruise control set at. I'm going to increase that now to about 75. And then the blue circle around the steering wheel shows that the car is in autopilot. So as you can see, my hand isn't on the wheel, the car is doing everything, but I'm still sitting here. My hand will typically rest right about here, or if I want to, somewhere around here, just comfortably keeping myself aware of what's going on. I'm checking my mirrors, I'm watching what's going on in front of me, mainly because you want to make sure that there's no cars that are just going to merge over into your lane, as this could cause the vehicle to slow down abruptly. The other thing that you want to do is make sure you have a good distance between you and the car in front of you. And you can do that by adjusting the distance like so. I'm going to keep it at two right now because of the heavier traffic. And I'm very aware of what's going on around me. Okay. So the reason I say you want to stay attentive, obviously you're on the highway, you're driving high speeds. It could be very dangerous if something was to happen. It's also because of phantom braking. So the car is relatively good at making sure that it doesn't abruptly slow down if it doesn't need to but if you have heard of phantom braking it is a thing it does happen every so often but it's it's calculated so you kind of can know when it's going to happen and prevent it so for example i'm going past this truck right now 
if the autopilot senses that the truck might be drifting over too far, it may brake to slow the car down and make sure that there's no chance for the truck to come over fully into the lane and hit the vehicle. So you have to be attentive and careful when you're going around cars. Now that I'm on this strip of highway here, we'll go over a couple of things. So, like I showed you before, this right scroll wheel will adjust your speed going up or down. If you push left or right on this, it'll adjust the adaptive cruise control distance between you and the car in front of you. Now, at three or four, you're gonna have a pretty safe distance. That's typically what I would travel on the highway doing. So as you can see, the car about every 30 seconds or so will give you a warning to slightly just shake the wheel a little bit. You'd have to be careful because too much force will disengage the autopilot, but there are a couple workarounds. So when the a warning comes up in a second, if you use either the left or right scroll wheels, whether to adjust the volume on the audio up or down, change track left or right, or if you to increase your cruise control speed or adjust the distance, any of those will also override the shaking of the wheel and the warning so you don't have to continually sit here and shake the wheel. I found that when I did a nice long distance road trip with this, it made it a lot easier. So I'm gonna increase my speed just one and you'll see that made the warning go away and realize that I am paying attention. So with basic autopilot, when you want to change lanes, you have to do so. But one of the nice features is when you put the turn signal on to change lanes, the car will kick out of autopilot, but it will keep the cruise control set. So because the car in front of me is going slower than I want to, I'm gonna put my turn signal on, slightly turn, the car's autopilot kicks off, I'll get back over, the car will begin to increase speed, and I will now reactivate autopilot, and the car takes over. Okay, so I wanna cover some of the mistakes that people make and some of the limitations that autopilot has. So, as you can see in front of me, this is a pickup truck towing a trailer. Now, as you can see on the screen, the car is not recognizing the actual trailer. It's only picking up the pickup truck. So, it's one of the features that you have to be mindful of if you're going by someone or around them, is that the car is not going to pick that up. The car will not sense anything in the road other than vehicles or cones, essentially. It'll also recognize garbage cans, stop signs, and speed limit signs, and people. The point of that is you have to be careful of other objects in the road. The car is not gonna sense tires, debris, anything that might fall off a truck, so you do have to be careful, you do have to be mindful of what's possibly in the road ahead of you. Okay, so the second tip that I wanna give is if you were to grab the wheel and turn, the wheel will disengage. That that amount of force will disengage the autopilot, but obviously at high speeds, rule number one is no extreme turns with the steering wheel. The best way to disengage autopilot is either to use the driving stock, the brake, or if you're changing lanes, to, to use the turn signal. The third tip that I would touch on is to make sure that you're aware of the cars around you and anyone that might jump into your lane Reason being is if someone comes around you and tries to get directly in front of you, if you have your car set at a four or five, let's say, it's going to cause the car to slow down and it could potentially be a pretty abrupt slowdown. So you definitely wanna be mindful of what's behind you and what could be potentially coming in front of you. The fourth thing that I'm gonna to touch on is the use on city streets of autopilot. Now, if you were gonna use it on the street, it will potentially work given the designated lines, proper distance, all of those things that we've already discussed, but you have to be mindful that it might slow the car down because in certain areas, it'll adjust based on the speed limit, and it's not perfect. So going through intersection where it loses the lines, that could potentially cause some issues. So I don't recommend using it on city streets unless it's a straightaway street, something like this, where you're gonna be on it for a decent bit. But otherwise, you have to be very careful with it. I definitely don't recommend using it on the city streets. And the last tip that I'll give is pertaining to driving with autopilot in inclement weather. I've experienced this myself where you're going down the highway, you hit a bad patch of rain, it's torrentially pouring, and 
what happens is when the car senses that, it activates the windshield wipers, but it can also cause the car to lose visibility, which means that the car will slow itself down to a speed that it feels more comfortable driving. But if you're, say, doing 75, maybe 80 miles per hour, and the car wants to slow down to 60, it could do so pretty abruptly. It could cause you to potentially hydroplane, or if the car behind you is not able to see you as well, they could potentially hit you. So driving in inclement weather, I recommend just taking over for autopilot. Once you get out of the bad weather, you can reactivate it, but be mindful and careful when using autopilot in bad and inclement weather. stated in the beginning autopilot really is a great feature to have it's made highway driving like this so simple it's easy you're relaxed there's much less fatigue on your body especially on long distance road trips you're able to just sit back monitor what's going on around you and essentially just enjoy the ride you can look around a bit more so overall if you were worried about how autopilot might work or if it's a feature that you really want to have in a car or not, it's definitely a feature that I would recommend. I can't even imagine going back to a regular car that doesn't have this. I definitely wouldn't want to take it on a long distance road trip, I can tell you that. But I'm gonna be at my destination in just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy the rest of this drive. If you have any questions about how autopilot works or anything of that nature, feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, my name is Mike Emil, and we will see you in the next video.